Hey everybody, the Four Gun Guy here. And why would you need to cool your rifle barrel? Well, we're going to find out here in a few minutes. Uh, I just did another video on comparing my hand-loaded ammunition to five off-the-shelf brands. And just to make sure that that comparison went smoothly and was consistent, I went ahead and used a rifle cooler in between the strings that I shot so I could keep the barrel in a consistent temperature zone. Uh, and to do that, I used the Rifle Cool. Now there's a lot of these out there on the market, but what I thought I'd do today is uh, I'll try to keep it short. Let's go through why you need a barrel cooler. Then we'll look at unboxing and an overview. And then I actually did take some uh, data measurements. So you know me and my data, <laughs> I like to compare things. So we'll see how this thing stacked up in cooling that barrel down and discuss those results, and then we'll have some final thoughts. So if you're ready to go, let's get to it. Well, let's talk about why you might wanna cool your barrel down. So look, if you have a, uh, you know, one of these smaller uh, kind of the pencil barrels and whatnot, uh, as you fire rounds through those, and, and now look, I'm gonna stick with just my 6.5 Creedmoor and those caliber types um, for PRS shooting. So if you have a narrower, smaller barrel, uh, the more you fire through that thing, the hotter it's gonna get, it's gonna heat up, and then you can end up with something called barrel whip. Now, I don't know if I've experienced that before or not, uh, I shoot a very thick barrel in my, it's a Bartline, uh, I think it's an M24 contour uh, barrel, which is very heavy, very thick. But even that barrel, if I start sending 20, 30, 40 rounds down range within say a 10 or 15 minute period, a couple things can happen. I can really heat that barrel up above where it really should be heated up. I could experience some barrel whip, I suppose, but the other thing is, it's just not good for the interior of the barrel to send that many rounds downrange that quickly and heating that barrel up to that high of a temperature. So really what you try to do is when you're at a match, when you're practicing, you'll shoot like in a match, right? We might shoot upwards of 12 rounds in a two minute period. Doesn't sound like a lot, but with the temperatures and the pressures involved in these cartridges, that is a lot, and it can put a lot of heat onto that barrel. Uh, now, in between stages, probably about 20 minutes or so, uh, it's nice to try to let that barrel cool down. Sometimes that can't really happen though, especially if you're shooting in June, July, August, and September in Central Texas, like I do. Uh, when the temperatures are upwards of 100, 105 degrees, and then you're heating that barrel up quite a bit, uh, it's hard to get that temperature back down. So that's one reason why you really need a barrel cooling device. The other thing that you want to think about is, uh, you know, we're trying to mount our scopes as close to that barrel as we can, uh, so they're not sitting high off of the action and the barrel. And with that said, as that barrel heats up, you're going to have a miraging effect in your uh, field of view through your scope. So you really wanna minimize that as well. So there's a lot of things that come into play around why we wanna keep our barrel cool. Now, how cool do you wanna get the barrel? Well, there's only, that, that, that's, uh, there's only so much you can cool that barrel down, right? So for example, um, if I shoot a 10 shot, 12 shot string, and that barrel heats up into the 120s, let's say, even around 130, I'm talking about the external temperature, so the internal temperature is probably a little hotter than that. Um, I'm trying to get that down into the 105 to 110 range, or 100 to 110 range. So you're talking about a 20 degree difference. Um, you know, in the winter time, do you really need this thing? Probably not, because it's gonna cool, that barrel's gonna cool off in between those stages if you have 20, 25 minutes in between stages. Or you may just run this thing in there for three minutes uh, just to get some air going down the, the, the barrel itself or the bore itself and then turn it off. Um, in the summertime, this thing's going to be on for probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and we'll see in the numbers how all that works out. 
Let's talk about the unboxing. It's pretty simple. I mean, it's a simple product. So uh, I'm going to use my wife's rifle. This is the Bergara uh, rifle with the Steiner uh, T5XI uh, mounted on it. But here, let me just do this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Let's get this into the picture. This is the rifle cool. When I open it up, hey, look at that. We have a rifle cooler, a barrel cooler in there. This thing's pretty slick. It's, it's small. It's compact. Uh, it's got the retractable nozzle. So basically what you do is you, you push this right here. You push that. The nozzle pops out. And then you're going to put that in the chamber. It does have a magnet here that's going to keep it kind of attached into the chamber. So if you want to use this as a chamber flag, you can actually use it as a chamber flag as well. Just turn it off. It's got a replaceable filter here. It's a 50 micron filter. And then it's got this chamber seal. So this little seal right here at the end, at the end uh, is really, really nice. Then it also has a metal belt clip. I really don't use that uh, for, for anything. So, and then the battery that it takes is a CR123 lithium battery. Now this says it provides about 50 cooling sessions. Uh, not really. I'd say the battery, if you're going to let this thing run for... 10 or 15 minutes, you're probably going to get 10 cooling sessions, maybe 15 out of it. But again, this is how it goes. And I'm not going to zoom in if you don't mind. It's pretty simple, right? It, it goes into the, to the chamber there. It seals in. And then to turn it on, now listen to how loud this thing is, though. So this is the, this is the loudness. And I'm sitting right here with the microphone. It's not really that annoying, but you know, uh, you know, it's running. And if you, you know, if I come up here and feel at the end of this barrel, I can definitely feel the air uh, being pumped out of this thing. Um, I've seen other reviews where they put a lighter at the end or whatever. I, I'm not going to do that. I can feel the air coming out. And so, uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat little device. So I could leave it in there as a chamber flag like this. It's got the magnet. That magnet really is, is grabbing there. Uh, and then when you take it out and store it, you just push this thing back down and I just store it in the box and I put it in my rifle case. So really there's the unboxing, very simple device. Uh, and I like the simplicity of use, right? It's got two, it's got two little, little, uh, buttons on it. One to push out the, uh, uh, that knob, the, the tube that's going to go in the barrel and then one to turn it on and turn it off. So very simple ease of use. Let's go ahead and look at some of the, uh, I'll, I'll show you what, how I did it, uh, how I used it in action, and then we'll look at the numbers. Last one. Okay. Yep. Hold us back. Barrel temperature is 117 ish. Oh, 120, 122, 23, 123, 123. So we'll, uh, we'll measure that at the, uh, after 10 minutes. Let's see, the barrel cool down to 105. So that's uh, 18 degrees in 10 minutes. That's not bad. I think as long as I can keep it below like 110, I'm happy. Let's look at the numbers here. And you can see that I did shoot the five strings. So string one through five. Uh, the 10 round temperature is uh, kind of stayed in, in, in about the same range from 120 to 126. And then the cool down temperatures uh, 
really got down into the range that I wanted them to be between 100 and 110 to keep things consistent. Remember, this was to compare some different ammunition types or cartridges. And so I wanted everything that I could be, uh, that could be consistent to remain consistent. And then you can see the cool down difference there went from, you know, was between 12 and 20 degrees. And in the minutes that the fan was on, that the cooler was on, uh, the first two strings was 10 minutes. Those last three strings, I kept it on for 15 minutes. And then one other thing I want you to look at here is that air temperature. The air temperature that day was 102 degrees with a feels like I believe that day was around 109 or 110 with the humidity. So Look, overall, I think this uh, rifle cool did exactly what was expected of it, and I was very happy with these results. Well, hey, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video, kind of short for, for me anyway. And uh, look, this Magneto Speed, the rifle cool, was uh, is a very good option here. Uh, there are some other options out there. There's the I think one's called the Barrel Cool, and then another one's called the Original Barrel Cool. And there's a couple more uh, that you can look up. And, and I think you know, they all basically do the same thing. So you can't go wrong probably with either one of those uh, options. I just happen to like this because I have the Magneto Speed uh, uh, for my uh, chronograph, and I like their quality, so I went with this. But hey, let's go over what we did. So we talked about why you might want to cool your barrel. We went over the unboxing of this little thing and how you use it. And then I showed you some actual data from when I was out uh, shooting. Now, you know, one other thing I wanted to say is, uh, you know, we talked about the contour of the barrel. Now this is, again, my wife's Bergara, and you can see this barrel is not nearly the thickness of my MDT build, that Bartline barrel that I have. So it, it would probably be even more important for me to use this on a rifle with a barrel with a contour like this. And then we discuss those results and here's final thoughts. So yeah, it's a good buy. If, you, uh, if you're in, in that situation, if you're competing, even if you're not folks, if you're, if you're going to the range quite a bit and you're sending rounds down range with a good rifle and you wanna keep that barrel at its optimum performance, uh, I really do think that this is worth investing in. So hey, Thanks for watching as usual. I really appreciate all the likes and subscriptions. I've got some other great videos coming up. I've got a barrel change on my, uh, my PRS rifle. I've got a nine millimeter PCC 80% build. I'm just waiting for the parts to get in for that. And I've got some other video ideas. So keep watching and uh, again, appreciate all your support. Until next time, shoot straight.